This here is the updated Mercedes G-Class and specifically what you see here is the new Mercedes G63, one of the most iconic Mercedes models. And what have they done to change or even improve it? Let's find out together with Thomas Nautikfühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go in the front. Here this lower part has been changed, lower spoiler and this air intake. This specific vehicle also has the optional carbon fiber package and the G63 has here these vertical fins in the grille. Throughout this review, I'll tell you all the details you need to know in general about the G-Class facelift and specifically talking here about the G63, the most screaming out model. Here also with these darkened turning indicators in the front, it's just a lovely detail that you have the turning indicators right here. This beautiful color here, by the way, matte, always hear it when you feel it it's called hyper blue yeah and it's definitely a color for me um or at least my shoes are somehow fitting to that um yeah i think i would definitely take this one so one of the criticism points of the g-class was because you know it's a very expensive vehicle and you buy it all not only for showing off yeah okay that's one of the one of the main purposes of for showing off but of course you also want to drive it on the motorway and so on and then it's often you know quite loud, not that comfortable and so on. So they wanted to do some changes to improve that. First of all, aerodynamics here. Take a, take a look at the A-pillar. There was a cover before, but this cover here on the A-pillar was changed that it creates less wind noises and it's overall more aerodynamic. So you have less noise on the interior. And also here on the top part, there is a new spoiler, like this small additional piece and that is directing the wind flow a little bit more, you know, actually better right over here so this is supposed to bring down the noise level on the interior and then of course it's also about the comfort so here we have 22 inch wheels a normal g-class would have 18 to 20 inch g-class 63 here the amg cc c amg g63 has 20 to 22 inch wheels so these are the biggest ones and it now comes with a new suspension. Normal G-Class has a base suspension, which is already somewhat adaptive. You can also select the driving modes and so on. And then there was the thing that on the rear axle, you have a stabilizer, an additional one in the G63. And that kind of made the riding sportier, but at the same time, also less comfortable. Then I thought about what can we do there. So the AMG model now gets an exclusive hydraulic suspension, special AMG suspension. And that one now actually removes this additional stabilizer, the mechanical one in the rear, and rules every wheel individual with this hydraulic system. And then you can actually increase sportiness and comfort at the same time. So we're really looking forward to the driving review then of this one to see how much it has improved and if it then can keep up with for example the suv brothers but still remain this off-road character remember it has a leather frame it has a rigid rear axle in general independent in the front that has been changed 2018 with the generation update and the length here is four meters 87 or 192 inches the g63 is just a tiny bit longer than the normal g class because it has, you know, just a little bit more overhang from the spoiler. Of course, this typical upright building form, iconic look. You have here these side steps in black. They would usually come in a brighter style. And here with more, you know, black accentuations, AMG exhaust. Yeah, this definitely gives a massive sound. Towards the rear, of course, this length is including the spare tire. This is the typical thing. And of course, because you have the spare tire, the rear hatch also opens like this. Oh, there's the, the cover here for, for the vehicle on the inside. And, you know, this door closing sound has definitely five doors here. This is always something special with it. Once again. And every single door sounds like this. This is also one of the most iconic things about the G-Class. Always nice to see. And to hear also the different sounds, doors and also the hood and so on. Yeah, everything is really iconic. Oh, they now put the AMG badge here, by the way, on top of the hood. That has also changed. Then let's open that thing. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It's so high, I can <laughs> barely reach it. Although I'm 189 or 6 foot 2, that will be relevant on the interior, of course. And the thing is that here, 
with the G63 AMG, it's the only chance to get the 8 cylinder anymore. This is the V8, 4 liter V8 bi turbo, 585 horsepower plus electric boost. Now all engines are mild hybrid, emission laws and so on, so we will also have some efficiency gains. At the same time, then, electric boost gives a little bit more power. So they kind of tuned that a little bit. Plus, now available a launch control, race start, an overall 0.2 seconds faster than the predecessor then, if you also have that launch control. Now at 4.3 seconds to one kilometer an hour, 62 miles an hour. This is then actually included in the AMG performance package, which also includes not only the launch control, but also this suspension I've been talking about, the AMG Active Ride Control. Other engines would be the G500. That one is not the V8 anymore, but that one would be a 3 liter inline six cylinder with 450 horsepower. And you can also get the G450D. 450D, yes, that's correct. That's the inline six cylinder diesel. But if you rather want to use your G Class for off road purposes, you can also do that. Maybe take it to the desert if you live close to the desert. This one here is equipped with the off road package, different color as well. Also, a matte one, but this is the olive green. Here we have only 20 inch and all terrain tires and also here more equipment on top you also have this protector here around the spare wheel and you can also then use this ladder to climb up also the active ride suspension is tuned to an off-road level where you have more settings especially for off-road like for sand driving rock crawling and so on and the suspension will act accordingly for example it has a special mode that you can get out of a sand stuck situation so this active suspension then even helps you more when off-roading when i'm talking about off-road this is how leah is going off-road here today for us uh, when she is filming um, so yeah she's taking the camera and then she can film me it always looks cool when i'm on camera but you know the camera men and camera women they always have to go in the mud to take these beautiful shots then when we have the nice forest location here key fob here in the amg styling then of course once again ah yes just sounds so iconic and why is it actually here look at that mechanism there we go here, like this, this, this moves back in there and that's like the first sound it does and then the slamming. So this is then like this composition. <laughs> Inside of the doors, here structured, then you have also these window levers on top of that so that you can easily reach them. Here you still get the feedback for controlling the seats, that's good since it's not the all new generation. And this inside here, well it's, you know, Hmm, this is not entirely hardback, I would say, or is it? Yeah, there is a structure, but there's no felt on the inside, however. Then AMG entry badge here for the 63 model. And all G-Class now get new steering wheels, either normal or here this time the AMG one with horizontal spokes. And they all now get these hashtag capacitive BS buttons on the steering wheel. So it definitely looks cooler, looks more modern, but the control while driving is not optimal optimum i would say this is a cool steering wheel microfiber outside carbon fiber on the top i love that and seats they have more or less remained the same sadly they do not offer any alternative to animal skin then jumping here to our off-road version vehicle just to see some different colors here headroom with one a9 six foot two still some headroom left there is this manual shade here by the way for the panoramic roof um, in this case well there's this off-road stuff on top of that. I'm not sure if I can really open that then. Um, it should work. Okay, now I want to try. There we go. Yeah, it does not damage the panoramic roof. It goes actually underneath this uh, top equipment. Here you can see this matte wood here, for example, on top of that handle. This is, of course, for holding tight in off-road situations. And they've also done some corporate changes. First of all, most important, you now have a touchscreen. Yes, you didn't have a touchscreen before. Now it works by a touch. Also new software update and so on. And these air vents here, they are still pretty cool. Illumination around, also with clicking sounds. Then here these off-road selections. They are in the middle part for the differential locks, for example. So it's easy to switch that. And I'm glad 
still a manual climate unit. Before you had this turning jog here for the infotainment system that, has been, that is gone now, you can use this as a touch field to swipe in the infotainment. Yeah, probably you would still use the touch. Um, however, some hotkeys right here. Then you have a split opening, more space underneath, USB-C charging, and the sounds are indeed pretty nice when you like close, click everything here in the front. You can also slide this either closed, once again, matte wood, you can get different decor elements, slide this open, and then, for example, cooling and heating for the cup holders, that's cool, inductive charging pad. And with these special off-road gauges, you can also better follow what's going on. The G63 also offers then here the AMG driving control button directly at the steering wheel to easily change everything while driving. If you live in the EU, by the way, this is here to deactivate this new speed limiter warning you have so when you exceed the speed so they have an easy hotkey solution to deactivate it interesting and the amg model also has these specific amg gauges that you can have some more telemetry information and also here this analog digital iwc stopwatch actually what do you think of this feature so which interior do you like better today, the darker one or here the brighter one? Rear seating, it is an expensive luxury car, but it's also not that long. However, legroom wise, it still works because everyone sits so upright and so high, so you still have enough legroom left. The seating itself is actually kind of stiff, not the best as, the as for the comfort and a lot of headroom because it raises here to the back part. When I'm being shuttled, by the way, in a G-Class, especially in the AMG model, you feel that rigid rear axle. And I have to say, the driving comfort, especially in the rear for passenger, is not good and it's not comparable to a big Mercedes SUV. So I'm really looking forward if that new hydraulic extra suspension will change this. A meter of 40 inches in width. It's only limited in the length. This is only 70 centimeters or 20 yeah, 28 inches, something like that. Just the height here is even more than a meter or 40 inches. That's quite cool. Luggage fits in easily. Here you pull the bench up first, like this, and then you can actually fold the back part down so it also goes flat then in the trunk. And this is here the G500, so not the AMG version. Then it looks like this. However, this is the AMG line. Front grille, you can see, not with the vertical fins like in the 63, but here more the horizontal stress and more bright situations, especially if you don't go for any night package. Also here, the bright turning indicators. We have 20 inch wheels mounted here. It's the maximum for the non-AMG model. And you can also see how it looks like with the side steps when they are bright. This color here, by the way, is called Sodalith Blue. So a little bit, you know, more subtle in this blue north. Towards the rear, is actually not too different between AMG model and non-AMG model. G500 here with the six cylinder now. So which one would you go for rather like this or the AMG? Towing hook, as we can see it right now here, by the way, maximum towing capacity is 3.5 tons for all the combustion engine models. And the third interior, here you can see this is not the AMG. Doesn't look too different also because this is AMG line interior. And then you also get the very same steering wheel just without the AMG controls for driving modes and so on. That's really interesting here. You can see in the lower part and also in the higher part, these special fields or segments in the windscreen. Usually you do not see them at all. We can see them here because the windscreen is, you know, has this special form of the G-Class and because of the artificial light. These are actually, you know, like left out parts in a certain layer spectrum of the windshield. For these beepers you use at, uh, you know, like at the toll station on the motorway, because if it would be just like this, these, these are so thick, meanwhile, that the signals don't get through. So sometimes you also see nowadays people at these toll stations putting down the windows and holding these beepers outside, and they left it out right here. So for certain markets where it's relevant, they still get through. Usually you wouldn't see this part in a normal daytime light. Are you a G-Class fan? Tell me in the comments and what you think about this update or would you rather maybe go for a Toyota Land Cruiser or for a Land Rover Defender?